Hello, and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing and room acoustics and home studio building. Today is gonna to be a quick but really interesting video on a way to eliminate the need to use putty pads around the backs of all your electrical outlets and all of your electrical lighting on your ceiling if you have J boxes in the ceiling. So this system, I call it soundproofing like a pro because it really requires that you go into a slightly deeper level of acoustic uh, implementation in your design, which requires an inner acoustic shell and then your outer soundproof shell. So I'll be explaining what all that means and how to do it in this video. Um, before we jump in, if you're on this journey of soundproofing, definitely take a look at my free soundproofing workshop. It goes in depth into everything I know about how to build professional soundproof home recording studios, um, whether you're in a basement or from the ground up or in a garage or something like that. So check it out at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's take a dive into this lesson of how to soundproof like a pro and not have to use putty pads. <laughs> So I recently had a conversation with J.H. Brandt, who is another really amazing studio designer, uh, one that I respect greatly as much as Roger Weiss as well. Uh, and he has been designing studios for decades. And he actually reached out to me and we had a, a really great and fun uh, Zoom conversation. He lives in Indonesia, so we, we had to figure out our timing. Um, but it was really great to just pick his brain and talk about studio designs and nerd out together. And one thing he mentioned uh, was this. This idea of never using putty pads. He's like, oh no, I would never use those. Everything he designs, he builds with the electrical conduit going in through one penetration in the wall, ideally, um, and then running it to the front of the room to uh, enter the desk or your console. And the idea here is that you can still have electrical outlets on your walls. You just actually place them in the acoustic wall. So the idea here is that you have this external shell. The external shell is your two layers of drywall, um, the double wall system, the you know independently framed ceiling ideally, and you have this system that's that's just drywall and sound isolation, but has nothing to do with the acoustics of the room. This is all for stopping the sound. And then on the inside of that that shell, we make an inner shell and we design out are acoustic walls. And the acoustic walls can be made of lighter timber. You don't need to use two by fours. You can use one by threes. Um, and you can design out the shape that you want your acoustic design to be. And in that shape, you can also hang your electrical boxes for your outlets and for your light switches and for your lights. Everything can be in the inner shell of the room. And this is a great system. You'll see it in professional, you know, mix rooms, especially so control rooms, but also in live rooms as well. And, and it's a design aspect of recording studios that is really great for reducing the amount of holes in your walls for isolation. So courtesy of, of JH Brandt's website, I just showed, I want to show you guys this picture of one of his own studio designs that he has on his website. Um, you can see some of his amazing work. It's really beautiful. And you can see how the panels of the electrical are actually on the acoustic wall. So that's, it looks like a real wall, but it's actually framed with fabric. And then there's fiberglass insulation behind that fabric to deaden the space to control the absorption. And so you can put the electrical outlets on that wall. And you'll notice that in the doorway, that's the actual outer shell. And so you can see how far out in this specific design, J.H. Brandt brought out the acoustic walls to really get his optimum um, control in that room so that it's a great mix and mastering room. So that's the general idea behind how to do this and why you no longer need putty pads because you don't need to put putty behind the electrical outlets when you're not going through your soundproof shell, your outer shell. So here's some videos right now that shows how I usually used to do this in studios. And now I'm trying to move towards this, this idea of not putting as many holes in the wall. And you can see how we put putty pads behind electrical outlets. We even wrap putty pads, which I still would actually recommend this. You can use putty pads around like an HVAC um, entry point as along with acoustic sealant. And that's where we've done putty pads in the past. But if you do this new concept of getting the, the room within a room, within a room, you know, you got your double wall system and then your acoustic shell, uh, it really does help with the electrical. 
So how do we feed the electrical into the room while still keeping it soundproof? So the best way to do this is to run your electrical through conduit piping, PVC piping. And I made up a little diagram in SketchUp real quick here just to show you kind of how I would imagine doing this. There's a million ways you can approach this, but here's one where you have the piping coming in through your exterior wall and it, it penetrates through your drywall and you wanna put acoustic sealant around where that penetration is make sure it's airtight and then I would jog the the actual piping down in that bay and so go down as far as you can you could have the piping go from the come in at the ceiling and then come out through the floor whatever you want to do several feet is probably enough to really kind of have separate areas where the holes are in your wall acoustic sealant around the inside penetration through your inside drywall and then you can run your piping throughout the rest of the studio all your electrical throughout the rest of your studio from that one penetration um, this has a benefit as well which I'll talk about in a later video and, and JH Brandt talks about this a lot with with helping with ground loops um, but that's a whole nother topic and this is more just about the soundproofing aspect of bringing the piping through the wall you could also on the entry point where you enter the wires into the pipe you could just kind of put some acoustic sealant around them some putty pad up around that just make sure that that pipe itself is sealed up on the front end so that sound can't travel through the pipe as easily and into your studio Lastly, I want to talk a little bit about low voltage wiring because this is one aspect that can still mess up your sound, the sonic quality of your recording studio, is if you run low voltage wiring, which means any sort of lights that require a drop in voltage. So from line level in the United States is around 120 volts. So if you're dropping down to say like 20 volts or 12 volts, anything for like usually under cabinet lights or some of the cool lighting that we can get in, in studios, that lighting should not be run parallel with our line voltage electrical wires because that could cause some hums and buzzes in the, in the wiring. So with your low voltage wiring, if you're using it in your design, just always try to keep it as far away as possible a good rule of thumb is to put your your like low voltage wiring in the ceiling if you're running lights up there and you could have all your acoustic electrical wiring for everything else at the line level down on the floor and that will keep a, enough space away from them and you don't want them to run parallel when they're next to each other but from that distance it's okay and then if you do ever have to cross them in your design just make sure you cross them at a 90 degree angle and that will also help with hums and buzzes and problems like that with electrical noise so in conclusion, you know, this design idea is is a more professional approach than the traditional home studio where you just have panels on the walls and kind of what I did in this studio. If I could redo it all, I would totally do a different approach. Um, but, you know, we live and we learn. So as I'm designing studios now, especially if they're more of a mixed room or a single room control room, I'm trying to incorporate this approach because it's just one less hole in the wall. It's going to help with the soundproofing and it's going to make the whole system more professional overall. Now, if you are not doing acoustic panels, but you still want a soundproof room, the putty pads are still great. There's nothing wrong with them. This is more for like a traditional professional recording studio design, not just someone who wants like a, a really quiet basement or a quiet apartment space or a quiet place to work in an office that doesn't incorporate hiding all the electrical behind acoustic panels. All right, so I hope this was helpful. Again, if you're on this journey and you're kind of piecemealing the whole thing together, uh, a quick fast track way to do this is to go to my free soundproofing workshop. So you can sign up right away at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. You can watch it right away and it's 45 minutes of in-depth teaching of me going over the process of how I would build a studio again, knowing what I know now. All right. So thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Um, check out JH Brandt's resources. They're amazing. You can check out his website. Again, no competition here. Uh, I like working with J with John and we have something cool that we're working on together and I'll announce that later, but just a lot of great knowledge out there. He's a really amazing resource. So I wanted to give him as much credit as is due for his ideas on this video and this lesson. So thanks again for watching and uh, I'll see you all next week.